Hello, my friends, and welcome to the WDW Newscast. Today is Wednesday, January 18th, 2012. My name is Lou Mangello. I am the host of WDWRadio.com, helping to enhance your enjoyment and appreciation of the Walt Disney World theme parks, with books, CDs, magazines, podcasts, and live video broadcasts like this, which, by the way, are brought to you by our friends over at TouringPlans.com. They not only are the research team behind the unofficial guide to Walt Disney World, but they can show you how to maximize your time in the parks because that is what it's all about. They have the crowd calendars, wait times, more than 150 different touring plans depending on how and who you go to the parks with, saving you time and, of course, in the process, money as well. You can visit them over at touringplans.com. Be sure and also download their Lines application to your mobile device. All right, let's get right into this week's Walt Disney World news. We're going to save the 800-pound gorilla or elephant, whatever he is, in the room uh, for last couple other quick bits of news this week. First, starting February 3rd, the Magic Memories in You, that's the castle projection show that takes place every night in the Magic Kingdom, is going to get a little bit of another makeover, just like it did for the Christmas holidays where they had gingerbread houses and presents, lots of little surprises like that. Starting February 3rd, it's going to get a little bit of a uh, romantic makeover just in time for Valentine's Day, expecting that to last probably to mid or late February uh, for that to begin. Again, that will be every single night uh, on the castle. One uh, bit of news is about a delay that's actually coming because Dumbo, Dumbo's sort of reopening and new opening for the spinning, dueling, double Dumbos, has actually been delayed a little bit, as well as the official grand opening of, we believe, Storybook Circus near Fantasyland. It was supposed to open on February 17th. We're now hearing that that and Storybook Circus are now going to grand have their grand opening on March 12th. So about three and a half weeks later for that. Again, as we get closer, we'll start to see what the exact dates are. I know they have been testing the new Dumbo ride. The old Dumbo is closed. They've already started to dismantle it and move it over to Storybook Circus. It couldn't be a newscast without talking about food over at Tutto Italia over in Italy. That is undergoing a minor refurb at this point. But one thing that is coming as an addition is a new wine bar. It's going to be called Gusto, and it's going to open with the restaurant on April 28th. So a couple more months before we have to see that again. All in the interest of serving you, I will, of course, be out there uh, researching that <clears throat> extensively. So a little bit of a rumor. Speaking of um, mobile devices and Disney games that occupy way too much of my limited amount of free time, but man, I will tell you that Angry Birds was so 2010 because Swampy the Alligator is my new best friend, and I'm not the only one. My kids, your kids, lots of kids of every age have been playing Swampy the Alligator's Where's My Water on their mobile device. Super, super popular. Huge hit for Disney Interactive. Uh, he has actually been rumored to be coming to the parks in a meet and greet. So Swampy may be coming to life uh, in the parks. Obviously, one of the first places you think about possibly meeting Swampy might be over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I'm thinking in the animation courtyard area, maybe by Disney Junior. Uh, could be a good tie in there. Would be interesting to see if Swampy comes to the parks. A. B. How many people would recognize him as opposed to being Louis the Alligator from Princess and the Frog? Some people in the chat room are saying, I've never heard of Swampy. I don't know it. Other people are loving Swampy. They want a Swampy meet and greet. <laughs> Somebody said Swampy should eat Duffy. Not sure if that's going to happen, although a cage match for pay-per-view would be awesome. Uh, yeah, some people might not recognize him. But then again, it's a great way to introduce people to not only the character, but to the mobile application as well. Again, that that brand synergy. Um, let's, get into, uh, let's get into the big news this week because we've heard... Super Bowl MVPs and Major League Baseball MVPs and celebrities and athletes and movie stars say it. Well, now President Barack Obama is saying the words. He's not actually really saying it, but tomorrow he's going to Disney World. Uh, we've obviously been hearing that President Ob Obama is going to be in Walt Disney World on Thursday morning to talk about travel and tourism. It is not a vacation for the president, but he is coming down to talk about sort of economic stimulus in terms of travel and tourism specifically international travel. We're expecting maybe he'll be talking about uh, groups from Brazil and China coming to the United States, not specifically Walt Disney World, but of course it makes sense. If you're going to talk about tourism and travel to the United States, 
you might as well go to the number one most popular vacation destination in the world. Um, despite some rumors and some things I've been seeing in the social uh, streams, uh, they are not shutting down the Magic Kingdom. Uh, a lot of people seem really mad about Obama coming for whatever reason. I don't know if it's a political thing or they fear that the Magic Kingdom is going to shut down. Uh, my thought is this, is that if he came to Orlando and didn't come to, to Walt Disney World, some people might be mad as well. But he is coming Thursday morning. Again, it is not a vacation. Uh, I actually don't even believe that he may be bringing the first family with him. He is coming for about three hours, uh, between 12 and 3 o'clock. He is expected to speak right from the Magic Kingdom. We're expecting to be on Main Street USA, probably with the castle behind him. Uh, again, about that uh, stimulating the economy through foreign tourism. How that's going to impact guests is relatively minimal. Uh, guests are going to come in the morning, but they will not be able to enter the park through Main Street. It's expected that what they're going to do is use some of the backstage entrance areas like they often use when it's very, very crowded. July 4th, Christmas, New Year's, a lot of times guests will enter and exit from these same areas. So you'll be entering behind Main Street USA towards Tomorrowland, and on the opposite side, you'll be entering in probably through Frontierland or Adventureland, again, going backstage, because all of Magic Kingdom's Main Street USA, the hub, and uh, the Central Plaza area will be shut down to guests. My understanding is that it is not even a media event. It's a White House invitation-only event, so I don't know what kind of other coverage is going to be for it. Uh, the only other interruptions, I believe, are for guests who had reservations at Tony's Town Square. Those guests have already had the reservations canceled and uh, been, I think, booked elsewhere if they so chose. Uh, one thing that does change is now when guests are uh, asking cast members, what time is the 3 o'clock parade? They can actually say it's now going to be at 3.30 because they did have to move it back a half hour to accommodate the present coming and going. Um, other than that, I think there will be relatively little impact other than, of course, uh, we can expect heightened security that you'll see, heightened security that you probably won't see as well. Uh, Disney has notified guests who are staying on property through an in-room notification that the president is coming on Thursday, so if they so choose, they can avoid that park. And to help offset that potential kind of uh, disruption in guest schedule, they've not only extended hours at other theme parks, but they've also introduced a new special event fireworks show over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, sort of encouraging people, if they don't want to go to the Magic Kingdom that day, uh, they can go. But keep in mind, if you are heading to the Magic Kingdom, other than, again, the security getting in and out, and not being able to access Main Street until after probably 3.30 or so when the parade comes through, that's going to be your only impact. All the other attractions are going to be open. Uh, I highly doubt that uh, President Obama is going to go and check himself out over at the Hall of Presidents, or as he would probably term it, the Hall of Me, um, or any other kind of uh, attractions as well. Uh, so, But if you are concerned about going, at, again, you get a chance to go over to Hollywood Studios. Uh, people are saying in the in the box, extra magic hours at Epcot until midnight. Um, one day park ticket hop. Uh, so if you do have a one day ticket um, and you are going to go to the Magic Kingdom, I believe they will let you actually uh, park hop in between. Um, this is actually not the first time um, that a president has actually been to the magic to Walt Disney World. Uh, no president actually has ever seen himself in the uh, in the Hall of Presidents. Many of the first ladies have. Um, we, one of the most famous stories is uh, is Rosalind Carter, the first lady going to visit uh, visit her husband, as it were, with Marty Sklar many years ago, back in the seventies. But actually, one of the first times a president came to visit Walt Disney World was back in 1973. Richard Nixon gave his infamous "I am not a crook" speech over at Disney's Contemporary Resort. Uh, and actually, Ronald Reagan visited Walt Disney World twice during his presidency, the first time in 1983. The second time, in 1985, he visited, actually for his second inauguration celebration. The first uh, time he was being inaugurated for a second time, it was freezing cold in Washington. Many of the bands and the parade members were unable to perform. It was about seven degrees that day. So what he did is he actually had a second celebration and parade down in Walt Disney World. And if you'll notice here, it was actually over in Epcot Center uh, in the location of the American Adventure Pavilion. Interesting to note, notice no clamshell 
behind the stage of the American Adventure. You can see, uh, obviously, the Fountain of Nations and Spaceship Earth behind him. And again, Richard Nixon didn't actually get into the parks, but he did actually have his press conference in 1973 at the Contemporary Resort. Um, people in the box are asking if presidents rode attractions. I haven't never heard of any president actually getting on an attraction, although I do know that Ronald Reagan did see the American Adventure, and he suggested that every American should go see it, and every president should go see it as well, too. Um, so it was interesting to note, as I sort of alluded to before, about people being upset about President Obama coming to uh, Walt Disney World of the Magic Kingdom. Hopefully, it maybe was just a misunderstanding about that he was going there on vacation or how it was going to impact guests and what he's going to do for uh, the limited uh, amount of time that he is going to be there. Again, I think by 3.30 you'll have no knowledge that the president was ever even in town. Um, although I did ask a question earlier today via Twitter and Facebook. I said, if President Obama did have time to just hit one attraction, what should it be? Uh, overwhelmingly, a lot of people said he should go see himself in the Hall of Presidents. Some people said just bypass attractions altogether, get that man a dole whip. Other people, of course, suggested classics like Pirates, Haunted Mansion, Splash Mountain, or just relaxing on a ride at the TTA. Um, but again, I don't think that's actually going to uh, to happen. And again, I think the guest impact is going to be minimal. And of course, um, some people also are saying in the chat room that he should be allowed. I think he could see it if he really wanted to. But I don't. Again, I don't think his family is coming. I don't think Michelle and the kids are coming again because this is not a vacation. I think he's going to be uh, in New York later on in the day tomorrow. But that really is uh, all the news for this week. Again, the big buzz is about uh, President Obama coming. Uh, for guests who are staying at Walt Disney World, I do believe they are going to broadcast his speech on Channel 36 in the in-park uh, resort guest rooms. I've also heard uh, discussion saying that they may be broadcasting something at other places inside the park as well, too, possibly even the Hall of Presidents. That is pure rumor and speculation there. Um, so, no, Air Force One is not going to be landing on the stall port. Air Force One is actually landing over in um, at MCO in, uh, in the Orlando International Airport. But that is the news for this week. I'd love to hear your comments on any of the news or some of the rumors. Tell me what you think about Swampy. Forget about President Obama coming to Walt Disney World for three hours. What do you think about Swampy the Alligator possibly coming to Walt Disney World? But I also want to remind you, too, that coming up on February 11th is the five-year anniversary of WDW Radio. I want you guys to celebrate with us on February 11th. We're going to have a very special event just for you, the box people, as we broadcast live from the Magic Kingdom, uh, taking some of your suggestions about things you want us to do for those five years. We also want you to please share your best WDW Radio event photos, whether it's the cruise, a meet of the month, D23, whatever it is, email those to photos at wdwradio.com. We're putting together a slideshow to share with you guys. Also, there is going to be now available a very limited edition five-year pin. It's going to look just like what's on your screen here. Uh, those are going to be regular sort of Disney-style trading pins, cloisonne pins with the rubber back. Uh, those are just going to be $10, and the proceeds from that, because everything that we do always has to have uh, some good come from it. All the proceeds from that are going to go to the Dream Team Project to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. And last, certainly not least, we're also going to have a WDW Radio Trivia Contest. Let's see how much you've been paying attention over the past five years. And thanks to our friends over at Mouse Fan Travel, Becky and her team have generously donated a six-night stay in Walt Disney World to the winner of that trivia contest. For more information, visit the blog over at www.radio.com and you can also find there, right on the homepage, a link that looks just like the five-year pin. It'll take you to all the information that you need to find out how you guys can participate. Really excited for what's coming up on February 11th. There's something else coming on out on around uh, February 11th. It's not the only thing that's happening for WW Radio, so be sure and stay tuned then. And, of course, got a lot more coming up later on this year. Be sure and mark October 1st, 2012 on your calendar as well. And um, that is going to do it for this week's show. Please make sure and come by to visit the website, not just for the five-year stuff, but for the blog, the videos, the discussion forums, the store, everything else going on there as well. Uh, I really appreciate you guys coming in, tuning in uh, this and every week. If you can't make the show live, don't forget you can catch it on YouTube, 
and I'll also post the audio on iTunes as well. Thanks again to touringplans.com. You can visit them at touringplans.com slash WDW Radio. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Lou Mangiello, and we are facebook.com slash WDW Radio. That's going to do it for this week. Hope to see you again next week, everybody. So until then, see ya.